Hey what's up guys and welcome to this full review of the iPad Pro with a 9.7 inch screen released in 2016. This is Apple's latest and greatest tablet and aims to tackle the more mainstream market. 9.7 inches is the screen size that has been the most popular and Apple really want to cement that with a tablet that's new, it's part of the Pro line rather than the iPad Air line. And so being part of the Pro line, does that actually make this a better tablet or does it just make it a more expensive one? Well, it all starts with the A9X chip that's embedded into the iPad. It doesn't sound that exciting, but what it results in is a very smooth browsing experience, whether you're on a web browser or whether doing something much more intensive like multitasking. To multitask, you simply swipe in from the right hand side of the screen. And then as long as the app supports it, you can then overlay two different apps or you can actually have two apps side by side and while this doesn't work as well as it would on the larger iPad Pro because of screen size it's still useful if you say you want to have Messenger open to talk to people while doing something a lot more intensive on the left hand side of the screen. The overall design is similar to the iPad Air but one new addition you'll find on the left hand side is this new sort of smart connector this is required if you want to add their keyboard dock accessory and there'll be more accessories coming out over time. Screen reflectivity is meant to be the best that they've ever made and even in direct sunlight I've noticed that it has been significantly better than the original iPad Air that I do have on hand to test. You'll also find four speakers on the device and these result in a much cleaner and louder audio than we've seen before and it's actually one of the main advantages over an older iPad. You can also plug in some cool USB devices, so if you plug in a professional microphone, you could do podcasts on the go. And this is actually quite a cool application. All you need to do is grab a USB adapter that is available separately, sadly. But you could also plug in a keyboard like we are here. Yes, it'll probably look a bit ridiculous and you'll be better off with a keyboard attachment or a Bluetooth keyboard. But no matter what keyboard you use, you can use cool things like the media keys or you can use shortcuts like Alt-Tab and you can then switch between applications like it was a desktop. It's not the slickest thing but it does work most of the time but please note if you do want to use a USB device then it's going to require a fair amount of power so you will have to plug your power adapter into this as well to get certain devices working properly. The camera has also been bumped, literally we've now sadly got a camera bump and this takes nice pictures that you can of course go and edit with some editing apps and this is where the new screen sort of shines forward. You've got a true tone display that reacts to the lighting that you've actually got going on in the room, as well as a increased color space. In real world terms, the screen is really, really nice. Like I say, the reflectivity is reduced and just the whole vibrance of the screen. It's a really nice screen to look at and it is definitely an improvement over the iPad Air series. Whether this warrants the £100, probably not, but it's very good that they've managed to increase the quality of the screen, which is very good in a tablet because it's basically a big screen. Performance in photo editing apps is very slick as well. So this is Lightroom taking a look at one of the pictures I took on the iPad. But even if you're looking at more professional photos, so full size JPEGs, uh, you're not obviously going to want to look at RAWs on this thing, but it's actually going to be a photographer's best friend, especially if you're someone that is more of a creative and you want to use an Apple Pencil, you can use that on the device and it's a lot more portable than the other iPad Pro, which for a lot of people will mean that it's worth the purchase. If productivity is not your thing then, then maybe gaming is. And through my limited testing of Monument Valley, I haven't had any problems with responsiveness, I haven't had any problems with dropping frames, and the performance has been slick. The black level of the screen as well, was this is easily the place I noticed it the most. This is really, really nice uh, and has really, really deep blacks. But this sort of is now the time to talk about whether this tablet is actually worth buying. Let me start by saying this is the best tablet I've ever used. I'm very happy with my purchase. This wasn't a review sample. I went out, I spent just under £500 on this tablet and I am very, very happy with it. But the question is, is this a pro tablet? Is this worth buying over the iPad Air 2? And in all honesty, for a lot of people, I don't think it is. It depends on your usage, really. But let's say you are a professional, you want to use a tablet that can support you if you do want to do things like podcasts on the go, if you do want to make movies on the go, and you want to use that graphical horsepower to its maximum. Well, 
If you want to use the keyboard accessory, if you want to use the Apple Pencil, they all cost extra, as does the adapter to use USB devices. So then a tablet that's already more expensive becomes even more expensive, especially if you buy one with a larger amount of storage and you buy the keyboard dock, then you're firmly in Surface Pro territory. And personally, for those sorts of people, unless they're really invested in the iOS or just the Apple ecosystem, I'd probably recommend that they go down that route. But for the people that want the best Apple tablet out there in this screen size, you're not going to be disappointed. But for those that just want an iPad, I really do question whether this is the right one for you. All the features are slick. I really like that True Tone display. It does have a bit of work to sort of keep up with uh, the changes in light if you want to use one of these cool LED bulbs. But I don't have many complaints about this other than price. But let me know, what do you think? Please let me know in the comments section down below. If you have any questions, it's at PCCentric on Twitter. And if you like this short style of review, then please let me know down below. But if you prefer the longer style, likewise let me know sort of down below because I'm still trying to work out uh, what's the best way to go about these things. So thank you so much for checking out this video. As always, please subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this. If you want to see the full unboxing, then you can find that in the link down below or in the little eye and like this video if you've liked it. A massive thank you and I'll see you in the next one. And thanks to Corsair of course for sponsoring the channel as always.